Hi guys, I'm Kesha. Welcome to the channel Two by Wonderland. It is coffee time and I'm here to talk to you about some of the books that I enjoyed the most in 2018. So first I wanted to make a top 5 but then I decided that 5 is just too little so I decided to pick out 10 and I decided also to mix it up a little bit, you know, have some horror, have some middle grade, have some love stories. So let's get to them. The books are though in no particular order because I just enjoy them a lot, all 10 of them. So I can really not pick favorites. The first one I want to mention is one that has made me discover my love for an author and that is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. So I have not read anything by Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab and then I got to Vicious this year. Needless to say, it changed my life and now I am V.E. Schwab trash. I want to buy all her books and read all her books. This is one of my main goals in 2019. We follow the story of Victor and Ellie and these two guys are in college and they're kind of working in an experiment but they cross the line with their experiments one day because they discover that when people have a near-death experience that's when they get superpowers and they want to test it out so they want to have themselves a near-death experience to see if they get superpowers. This book was just fantastic magical, it was interesting, it was nerve-wracking and you were so invested in the story and in the characters it was wonderful and it's a five-star read. Then let's go to a chunky book and that is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. This was also one of the discoveries for me for this uh, year in 2018 and I want to read the other two books on the trilogy. You might have heard me talking about this book already a thousand and one times but in case you have no idea what this book is about we're following the story of Diana Bishop and she comes from a family of witches but she wants nothing to do with magic she doesn't want to practice magic and she just wants to forget about that part of herself until one day she's in the library at the college where she works and she founds a manuscript that has some kind of spell on it and she doesn't know how she did it but she kind of breaks the spell and after that, a lot of weird creatures start to appear around her and she realizes she got herself in some kind of mess way bigger than she thought. And this book has demons, vampires, witches, anything, you name it. And I absolutely loved it. So if you like books about the supernatural, you like Anne Rice and things like that, and I know that is a really big name to throw in there, but it kind of gave me a little bit of Anne Rice vibe. So if you, can't, if you like that kind of stuff, you should pick this one up. Now we have on the list one of the last books that I read in 2018 and that is The Outsider by Stephen King. This book was everything that I wanted. This was like the greatest thriller ever combined with it and it was just fantastic. The first half of the book felt like a thriller that was so freaking good you could not put it down and the second part was some kind of Stephen King's It where he just goes into the more weird, disturbing side of his storytelling and I absolutely adored it. I ended up giving it only four and a half stars because I thought the transition between these two parts was a little bit abrupt and I would have loved it to have a little bit more smooth but this was definitely a great, great read and I would recommend it to anybody. It is a 560 pages book and it was totally worth it. If you don't know what the story is about, we are like in a small town and then there is a very disturbing murder of a young boy and all the kind of hints that they have point to one really well-known and respected trainer, you know, the, the guy that trains the boys in the team at school. But things get complicated when they find out that their main suspect had the perfect alibi and there's actually footage that show him somewhere else at the time of the murder. So the question is, can a person be in two different places at the same time? Ready to figure it out. Next is What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli, one of my favorite, favorite reads. And actually I want to reread this because I just loved it so much and also one of the reasons why I'm gonna get all Adam Silvera's books and try to read them in 2019 because I really love him and his writing. So this is a book that he co-wrote with Becky Albertalli and oh boy was this good. This was everything. This was one of those books that it is such a pleasure to read and you cannot put it down and you're so invested. Like I was smiling and giggling and you know I was living this. I was living for them for both our main characters. 
We follow Arthur and Ben and they meet one day by chance in a post office and then they get separated without exchanging any kind of contact so they don't know how to get hold of the other person. So after that encounter, they think it was a mistake, both of them think that it is a mistake that they didn't exchange any kind of contact information because they would actually like to meet again. This book, it's just lovely. It's just wonderful and Dylan which is Ben's best friend was my favorite character and there are many Harry Potter references in this book that just made me happy they just made my day and it's absolutely stunning it's one of those books that you think it is kind of simple but it is just wonderful I don't know if I'm making any sense right now but it's one of those books you know that it doesn't sound too complicated of a book or of a story but it is just so well written and it is just so beautiful and you're so invested with the story and the characters that it is a five star read. Next we have Brain on Fire by Susanna Cajalan and this is a memoir that I wanted to read. It was actually on my wish list of books that I wanted to purchase and then when Netflix announced the movie was coming out I decided to get it and read it right away and that was one of the best things I did in 2018 because this book was just so good I just loved everything the way it was written the story how it's also teaching you and how it makes you reflect on life and medicine and how the brain works and it was just fantastic it was stunning and it was way better than the movie let's put it out there even though I really like Chloe Moretz who played the main character in the movie and the movie is okay I mean it's not bad or anything but this book is so much better and if you don't mind reading memoirs I totally recommend this one to you because it was just so interesting and it was just so addictive and I just couldn't stop reading then we also have Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire and this is book two on the Wayworld Children series and I got to read this one at the beginning of 2018 and absolutely loved it. I love this one better than the first one. In the first book we are introduced in a world where some children find a door to another world which is kind of like a magical world and some of those kids get lost in these worlds. And then at some point they make it back to reality and their parents don't know what to do with them because the kids have a lot of trouble to adapt again into reality and the real world. These children all they want to do is to find again that door and they get really obsessed because all they want to do is go back to that magical world so the parents end up sending them to some sort of rehabilitation center and that is Eleanor's West home for wayward children and they're being sent there so that you know they help them kind of deal with everything and to adapt again uh, to the normal world and I absolutely love that idea and the books are you know short so it's easy reads and the second one for me was better than the first one but I loved both then I have a whole series that I'm super glad I decided to read this year and it is a middle grade and that is Cirque du Freak by Darren Sean it is a total of 12 books and they are just fantastic we follow the story of Darren Sean and there is this kind of Cirque du Freaks that comes to town and he really wants to go and see it so he manages to get a ticket and he goes with his best friend Steve and so they watch the show and they're super impressed by everything that has been happening in the show but there is something that uh, draws Darren Sean back into the Cirque du Freak to talk to Mr. Krebsley and after that encounter everything changes forever for Darren Sean and we find ourselves in a world full of magical stuff and supernatural beings and it is just so good. The world building is fantastic and this is one of those middle grades that is so good that it doesn't matter at which age you read it you're gonna love it. So if you love the supernatural stories about you know werewolves, vampires and all of this kind of stuff definitely for you. Another middle grade that I want to talk about it is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab and I picked this one up as soon as it came out because I knew that I wanted to read it and also because I was you know curious to see the writing of Victoria Schwab in a middle grade and I absolutely loved it. I think if I would have read this as a teenager I would have been super addicted to it and I would not have been able to wait for the next one because I think this is going to be a series based on the main character and it is a girl that can cross the line between the real world and the world of the ghosts. The most funny part about this and ironic is that her parents 
post a TV show about like haunted places and haunted mansions and things like that and they don't know that their daughter can actually cross the veil between the world of the living and the dead and this ends up being a little bit kind of like a detective story like a mystery research kind of thing and I absolutely loved it then I have a love story because I decided that I had to include at least one romance and that is The Kissing Booth by Beth Rickless and the reason why I got this book is because the Netflix movie came out and I was addicted like I've watched that shit like five times already probably so after I watched the movie, I realized it was a book, so I obviously had to order it and read it and it is an over 400 pages book, but I think I read it in like two days because I was like obsessed with it. Now there are some differences with the book and the movie, but I loved both. We follow the story of a girl and a boy whose mothers go into labor at the same time, the same day, at the same hospital, so they become friends. And then they grow up kind of together, this girl and boy, and they make kind of like this list of rules that they have to follow. And they're like best friends, they're like twinsies, like they do everything together, they've been always together, they even celebrate their birthdays together. But one day they realize that they are all grown up and she falls in love with her best friend's older brother and she cannot help it and that is breaking the rules what i really loved about the story is that it shows you how relationships change with time and sometimes things you know are meant to happen in life and some people kind of drift apart a little bit so it's about friendship about love and all of that and i just loved it i just loved it if you're looking for a good romance and you have not read this one yet pick it up the last book I want to talk to you about is a book that I read during October when I did my witchathon, and that is How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather. So this book is one book that I just picked up because I liked the cover and it was about witches and it had good reviews, but boy I didn't know how much I was gonna love it. It is about a girl that it is not in a good moment of her life because her dad just went into a coma after an accident and so she and her stepmother decide to move to a house that her father had inherited and this house is in a very small town where the solemn trials took place and they decide to move there and then move her dad as well to a hospital near there because they think that being you know in a quiet place is going to be beneficial for everybody however she's the new kid so when she goes to school you know she's having trouble adapting but what starts kind of being a regular teenager tale totally transforms into a story about the Salem trials and who was on which side, you know? And she discovers that her family actually were the ones that were hanging the witches and she comes into some conflict with other people at school and I don't know, I just loved everything. I thought it was so well written and I could not put it down and I just needed to know more and I was excited about all the stories that were being told about the witches and the trials and everything and it was just fantastic. If you're looking for a good witches book, this is the one. So here you have it, my favorite 10 reads of 2018. Hope you enjoyed the video, let me know down below what you thought about the books that I have mentioned and let me know which are the books that you read in 2018 that you love the most. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, all my other social media is listed down below for you guys and I hope to see you all in the next coffee time. Bye!